Hey everyone, it's Wednesday, time for Wisdom Wednesday. Hope you're all doing well, staying cool. Uh, missed you all last week, but was uh, able to visit one of my sons and another son came to where we were in Nashville, was able to see a friend singing at the Bluebird, had some good family time. It was really just a nice week off. And now we're back into the depths of summer and this heat wave. So please stay cool, stay hydrated, keep yourself in good shape. If you're out working in the yard, get some solute in there, maybe have some salt type electrolyte, electrolyte waters and things like that. Keep yourself in good shape. Haven't done a, a COVID update in quite some time. So I thought because there seems to be a pretty good wave of phone calls of patients who are calling in and reporting positive testing, even after previous infections and certainly after vaccination, thought I would just do a little update. Not a lot new or different, but maybe just to reiterate and for those of you who are struggling a little bit, just how to try to manage things. So certainly from the standpoint of what we've discussed over previous videos, just what to do for prevention or for just trying to stay in good shape immunologically. And I think that's the key is just being able to keep your immune system in great shape. We know that everything starts with nutrition. So limiting sugars, trying to eat whole foods, staying away from processed foods. These types of things are gonna be a good foundation and a great start, whether you tend to be keto or vegan or paleo, just making sure that you just limit sugars because certainly any type of microorganism, be it virus or bacteria, loves to grow on sugar. Plus, we know that that's what really adds to a lot of the comorbidities, the type two diabetes, the metabolic syndrome, et cetera. So just trying to start there is a wonderful place to start. And of course, we're always gonna be big on vitamin D. We like to make sure there's K2 with it, but at least some vitamin D3, 5,000 international units at least a day, just as prevention. We like a little bit of vitamin C, anywhere from a thousand to a couple of thousand milligrams a day and zinc, maybe 20 to 30 milligrams a day. I typically get a little queasy with zinc if I don't have it with food, so I do like to take that particular mineral with food. And then just whatever else you do, we certainly always like to have people take fish oil and probiotics and magnesium, et cetera. But in terms of just COVID prevention, the vitamin C, D, and zinc are really sort of foundational and then we add a few things should you begin to become symptomatic. So the other things that you can do just in general to keep the immune system in good shape is saunas and cold showers or doing cryotherapy. These are what we call hormetic stresses, which help the body be slightly stressed and then have to develop recovery aspects of getting back to a balance. So it produces just a mild stressor, thereby allowing the body to practice kind of getting back into balance, whether it's cold or hot, either one of those tend to be really good ways of boosting that immune system and getting gears going. Otherwise, we know that melatonin also is exceedingly beneficial from the standpoint of during COVID in particular, it seems to have significant benefit in reduction of significant symptoms should you get COVID. So we recommend that. And we know that melatonin also is great when you look at the long-term data in reducing risk for cancer and Alzheimer's. But there's just a lot that happens with melatonin at night in terms of rejuvenation and cleaning up a lot of the glymphatics in the brain, et cetera. There's just some, some real benefits to melatonin. So what we're seeing now in the United States is an increase in a very easily obtained Omicron variant 
the BA4 and the BA5, and these are easily transmissible. They tend to be a lot milder for most folks, particularly people who've had a previous infection, and we know that, that it is escaping the antibodies from vaccine, although it's those, not to say that the vaccine isn't of value, it just is not preventing disease, but it does seem to be limiting as far as hospitalizations and severity of disease. But when you do, or if you do get a variant and test positive for COVID, the things that we recommend are bumping up some of these supplements in terms of dosing and adding a couple of other things. So my basic pack as far as protocol for these types of infections right now is I'm recommending 10,000 international units of vitamin D a day, and these are all for one week. So 10,000 of vitamin D a day for a week. Vitamin C, I like 5,000 a day. Now it's hard to get vitamin C all at once because it can cause some diarrhea. So I recommend about 1,000 every two or three hours. You can get emergency, put it in your water or get any other form of vitamin C and just take it every two or three hours just so that you can add it up at the end of the day, getting close to four or 5,000 milligrams a day. The zinc, I wanna bump up to maybe to 50 milligrams a day. And then in order to drive zinc inside the cells, an additional supplement called quercetin, Q-U-E-R-C-E-T-I-N, quercetin, 500 milligrams twice a day to help push that zinc inside the cells. This is called a zinc ionophore, and it's that zinc inside the cells that diminishes replication of the virus. And then a couple of other things, if particularly if you tend to be someone that has massive inflammation when you get an infection, so a mast cell stabilizer, two things, there's an H1 blocker, which is going to be a Zyrtec like you would if you had allergies. And a lot of folks are actually even describing this particular variant infection as, as just seemingly like seasonal allergies, mostly upper respiratory. So Zyrtec uh, daily for the week, and then also an H2 blocker, which is Pepsid. And just take one of each of those a day for a week, and they seem to stabilize any type of mast cell activation so that you don't have just massive inflammation. And there's some benefit to that. So far, our patients have done quite well with this type of regimen, and we are not seeing major problems with hospitalizations. Just know that it's very transmissible. And you know, if you get sick, just stay home and uh, protect others. The CDC is still saying that you should stay home a, a total of five days from onset of symptoms minimum. And if you have fever, you need to, to make extend that a little bit longer, perhaps. And just rest up, don't overdo it. Sometimes people are getting reinfections or just recurrence of the same infection a week or two out if you push yourself a little too much. So just recognize that this is a viral illness and allow your body time to heal. Obviously, taking in a lot of collagen can be helpful and rejuvenating as well as making sure you stay hydrated. So hopefully that's given you a little bit of a uh, update on what we know at this point. These variants are gonna continue to be problematic over time. Just know that we cannot keep up with vaccines with the rapidity that these variants are changing. It's not that they're not helpful, but we're not gonna be able to get say an Omicron 5A variant vaccine because it will probably be likely long gone by the time this happens. So we can't just continue to kind of play whack-a-mole with this. We will continue to have support through all this, but just know that these little things are rapidly changing. And so we want to just do all we can to optimize our immune system. That's the key. So even though the antibodies may not be working, we know the other side of our immune system, our T cells and B cells are all hopefully able to come in and do the work that needs to be done as far as the other side of the immune system. You all have a great week, stay cool, and we'll talk again next week.